chapter 6 uh, this morning, where we was last week, and I want to just kind of go a little bit further into some of this and, and uh, make some, uh, some more observations uh, about this. Um, if you weren't able to be here last week, uh, miss the message again, uh, you can always uh, go to Hester Community Church on YouTube. Uh, watch the messages. There's music there, testimonies. Uh, you can always check that out, or you can get a CD uh, as well. Uh, but the best way to get it is live. Amen. Yeah. Amen. The best way to get it is live. Yeah. Yep. Memorex is good, but it's not better than live. Uh -huh. Remember the old commercial, guys? I'm telling my age here is it live or is it Memorex? Right? Uh, but anyway, live is always better. Don't let anybody tell you any different. Amen. You, can, you, might, be, you might be staying home watching TV, uh, church on your TV, but it ain't good as live. That's right. That's right. Amen. Amen. And so, uh, uh, but we do know that sometimes, uh, you know, people need to do that. Uh, they're unable to get out. Uh, and so, you know, you have open heart surgery. you got to stay home for a while. Right. Amen. It's just the way it is. I mean, I know Kent wanted to come, but you wouldn't let him. And so, uh, <laughs> praise the Lord. Amen. And so, you know, sometimes that happens, right? Amen. And so it's, it's nice to have that available. Uh, and then other times people are just lazy and they don't want to come. Uh, and so, okay, well, you know it's true. Amen. And so anyway, but it's good. It's good to see you. And so live is always better. Amen. 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 Genesis chapter 6. We're going to begin reading at verse 5 uh, this morning. Verse 5. Praise the Lord. Amen. I'm reading from the New King James Version. It says this. It says, Then the Lord saw. Everybody say saw. Saul. He saw or he seen or he was looking. Amen. And that the wickedness of man was great uh, in the earth. And that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. You know, um, a few things uh, there uh, right off of the, the cuff there is that not only does God see, but he knows what he sees. You know, it's, it's not that he just sees, you know, when we see somebody, you know, that, oh, I've seen them, whatever. But God sees the why. That's right. God sees the why. He sees the motive. He sees the, the corruption. He sees uh, the intent of the heart. Right. He sees the, the malice. He sees the rebellion. Uh, in the heart of man, he sees it. And he saw it here uh, in, in this day. And so there's nothing that is hid from God. That's right. That's, right. That's right. There is nothing that is hidden from God. Every, you, you may hide it from people, but nothing is hidden from God. One of my favorite uh, uh, stories in the Bible, when it talks about Adam and Eve, and they sin against God. They're like, oh my goodness, we're naked. Uh, so they uh, put fig leaves and uh, covered themselves. God shows up and he says, where are you? He knew where they was. Right. That's right. <laughs> he knew. He knew that they ate of that at the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Right. He knew that. Right. But see, sometimes we need to know that he knows it. We need to know that He knows it, that He is not fooled. He knows what's going on in there and He knows why it's going on. Amen, right. But not only does He know, not only does He see it, but He is the only way that it can be fixed. Amen, right. Thank God for redemption. Amen. Thank God that even though he, he knows our thoughts before we even have them, but yet this same God that is all-knowing, all-powerful, all-seeing, He is all-loving, all-merciful, all-compassionate, all-long-suffering. And He comes near to us even while we were yet still sinners, Christ died for us. But don't be fooled. He's not only the Lamb of God, He is the Lion of Judah. Come on, somebody. And how many of y'all know you're not going to poke and play with a lion too long? 
Come on, somebody. It's one thing, you know, I, I, people know this, and, and I just know that eventually somebody's going to, some of you, I don't know how y'all are, you're going to be like, Pastor said he wanted one, let's get him one. <laughs> I've been talking about them fainting goats. Do not, <laughs> Please do not do that to me. <laughs> it's just a joke, and I'm just talking. But it's, it's fun. It's like, you know, the little goat is it's so cute. And I'm like, ha! And boom! How many of y'all know you're not doing that to a lion? Right. Amen. Oh, no. hey, you're not going to go pull on a lion's tail. You're not going to slap that lion around. Right. Shoot, I knew better when my cat started getting older. Right. Right. I'm talking about a house cat now. Come on. You know what I'm talking about? Their kids are you're like, eh, they're like, eh, you're like, oh, <laughs> oh, oh, we got a few scratches. Right. <laughs> Them cats start getting a little bit older. Whack! <laughs> Ow! Ow! You stop. Right. All of a sudden you break out the furry toys. <laughs> Here you go. You, you start putting stuff on a string and dangling. Here you go. Because you know Amen. that cat has grown up. Amen. Let me tell you something. Jesus is not a baby in a manger anymore. Amen. Right. Amen. Right. He's not in a manger anymore and He's not on a cross nor is He in a tomb. Right. He is sitting on a throne. Amen. And He is King of kings and Lord of lords. Come on somebody. Amen. And every tongue will confess and every knee will bow. I don't care what you think, what you believe, who tells you what, it will happen. Right, right, Come on, somebody. It will happen. Whether it happens when in my lifetime or the in your generation or our kids' generation, Jesus will come back. He will judge the earth in truth and in righteousness. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. And the goats and the sheep are going to be separated. The wheat and the tares are going to be separated. Right. God knows. So instead of putting on our fake smile and our fake God bless you's, let's get real with God. Let's get honest about where we're at and what's going on in here because God already knows it. And it's mockery to Him for us to try to think we can hide it. Amen. God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, that will he also reap. That's right, yeah. You sow to the flesh, you're going to reap the flesh. Yep. Sow to the Spirit, you'll reap the Spirit. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Some of y'all like, dang, Pastor preaching this morning. Amen. Ooh, what's going on? What's going to get better, too? <laughs> Did you get some more guests, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Noah says... He, he says that the, the earth was full of wickedness. The intent, the intent and the thoughts of man's heart was only evil continually. Now what, listen, listen to this. Listen to this. Look at it. And the Lord was sorry. I want you to think about this. And the Lord was sorry. You know, when we look in our world today, it, it, it's, it's always, you know, it's, it's funny because, you know, we as Christians get this, you know, I don't know if it's righteous or it's self-righteous indignation at times. It's kind of hard to tell. Because, you know, we don't really know the heart. You know what I'm saying? You know, we see stuff. Oh, it's just all oh, out. Man, we're throwing stones. We're telling tell, tell, oh, We're ranting and raving about Oh, yeah. Come on. Yeah. But we're not sorry. God's sorry. He, it's, he's, he's grieved. He's, he's, in, he's in pain. You know, when it, it's, it's kind of like the way Nehemiah responded. When he heard that the walls 
of Jerusalem had been destroyed. That everything was in desolation there. He didn't, he didn't, well, if they would have done this and done that and this their own fault and this blah, 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 come on somebody. You know, like some people do. Yep. Oh, it's this and that's, you know, acting like they, <laughs> you know, like they're there.
me tell you what the Bible never says. He was sorry that he sent Jesus. He never says it. He was never sorry for redemption of man. Think about that, folks. Think about it. He was never, he has never been nor never will be sorry for redeeming man, for sending Jesus for sinners. Never sorry. He was grieved, verse uh, 6 says. He was grieved in his heart. Those of you that are parents knows what this feels like. I know now what my parents felt like. When I was full of wickedness and did evil, disgraced their name. Come on, somebody. So I never thought it was like my, you know, whatever. Didn't care. As a parent, you know, my kids have made mistakes. Listen to me. But out of any mistake any of my children have ever made, as a father, I've never not loved them. Amen. Amen. And they've done some pretty boneheaded stuff. <laughs> Just like I did. Come on, somebody. Amen. Just like you have. Amen. I mean, some of your kids win first place every month. I understand. Amen. <laughs> But <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know the thing I <laughs> the thing I always got kicked out of. You know, it's no, it's no secret. I've been, but it's I like the <laughs> I like the I like the bumper stickers. <laughs> The same, the same stuff like, my kid's an honor road student. But I, really, I can relate to the other bumper sticker that, that says, my kid beat your honor student up. Take that one. Yeah. Yeah. I might not have done real good in school, but I'll whip your honey. <laughs> As a parent, don't we? It's not that you you stop loving. And I, I understand that now. I mean, I get it. And, and it wasn't until, and not that I didn't struggle with it. Hear me out. Not that I didn't struggle with the love of God for my own me. I mean, how can this be, man? I mean, how can God, how can, how can you love me? But it helped me to, to uh, more fully, if you will, to more fully grasp when I became a father. Because all of a sudden, There was nothing that I wouldn't do for my child. There was nothing that I wouldn't have been willing to give for my child. There was nothing that I, that I would not have defended them from. But on occasion they made me sorry. Come on. You understand what I'm saying? And so, so God, God is, God is seeing this and he's, he, he's seeing the wickedness and the absolute 
uh, uh, abandonment of who he is. And out of all of the people of the earth, think about this, out of all of the people of the earth, Noah was the only one. It didn't say Noah's sons. And it doesn't say Noah's sons' wives. It said Noah. It didn't even say Noah's wife. It said Noah found grace, found favor in the eyes of the Lord. Think about that. One person. It's almost like this redemptive story. It's this, it's this parallel. It's kind of like Adam and Jesus, Noah. Are you with me? It's one person. What did this one person do? Let's look at it. It's, it. It says very clearly, it says, So the Lord, and the Lord, verse 7 says, So the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, creepy thing, and birds of the air, for I am sorry that I have made them. But Noah found grace or favor in the eyes of the Lord. Verse 9. This is the genealogy of Noah. Noah was a just man, perfect in his generations. Generations. Noah, here it is. Noah walked with God. And Noah begot three, three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. And the earth was also corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. So God looked upon the earth, and indeed it was corrupt. For all flesh had corrupted their way on the earth. Think about this. One person in the entire earth found favor with God. One person in all of the earth walked with God. Oh, I'm sure there were people that were claiming they walked with God. I'm sure people were saying how they're Christian. And you all know that that's not what they were saying back then. You understand that? I'm, I'm making a point here. You with me? Okay. Christian back then. No, that's heresy. Heresy. I'm making a point here. Follow along. I'm sure there's lots of people that said, but God knows my heart. Yeah, that was the problem. Come on, somebody. God understands. Yeah, and that's a problem. See, we profess to be a lot of things before man that we are not in the closet. Come on somebody. Amen. That we are not behind closed doors. We can tote our Bibles. One man in all the earth. Now let's think about this for a moment, shall we? Every person on the face of the earth, in Noah's radius, if you will, right? In Noah's radius, you know, we all, most of us kind of live our life in a 40 mile radius, don't we? Amen. Think about it. Amen. Most of us live our life in a 40 mile radius, yep. right? Quincy, Hannibal, the occasional trip to St. Louis. You know, but for the most part, our lives are lived out within a 40 mile radius, aren't they? So that's Noah living his, living his life out. Almost five steps. Amen. It's a good thing I'm so uh, quick. Agile. Agile. Thank you. That's the word I was meaning. <laughs> so in Noah's parameter, in his radius, Everybody that he knew was corrupt. Everybody that he
he knew wasn't living for God. Everybody that he knew, the intent of their heart, their thoughts, everything about them was evil. So much to the point that God said enough. But yet Noah walked with God. Amen. Pastor, it's so hard. It's so hard to live for Jesus at school. It's so hard to live for Jesus at the factory. It's so hard to live for Jesus at work. It's so hard to live for Jesus at the office. Them women around me gossip all the time. It's just hard not to get involved. It's so hard. Glenn. Despair. Agony. Oh me. Come on. It's so hard. 